Louisville's history educationally is very similar to what you find in, in the entire country. Uh, for a long period of time, in most parts of this country, it was against the law uh, to teach African Americans how to read and write. Now, there were some exceptions in some regions like this one, but the general trend was that ed education worked against the interests of slavery, and even educating free people of color helped to destabilize slavery, even though they weren't enslaved themselves. Uh, so you have this stereotype on one hand that African Americans lack capacity to learn beyond a certain point, but then you've got the flat out reality uh, of people prohibiting black learning because they felt it was going to be dangerous. History has a lot to do with how we got to where we are today, and I think a lot of times people want to approach education from the perspective of just the here and now without a real good understanding of how history has played a role into how we got to where we are today. As early as 1740 in this country, you had what we call compulsory ignorance laws. Uh, the first one goes uh, uh, from South Carolina. Uh, after Nat Turner's revolt in 1831, uh, they spread pretty much across all of the Deep South. Uh, states like Kentucky, Tennessee, where the black population was around 20, 21 percent or so, uh, didn't pass laws prohibiting black education. They didn't do anything to, to stimulate it either. Uh, so here in Louisville, where you had a, a, a free black community, you had people able to start schools in black churches and that sort of thing. Uh, students had to endure tremendous hostility. Uh, you know, they could be attacked on the street if people saw you carrying a book uh, back in those days. Uh, once the slave period is over, an organized community like Louisville was able to secure some educational opportunities for African American children, mainly through protests, petitions, that kind of thing. Uh, African Americans in other parts of the state where you had, you know, decent enough sized black populations could do the same thing. But education was very separate. It was also very unequal. Uh, there were laws in the 1880s that, that said uh, a black teacher couldn't make more than 55% of what a white teacher was paid. Uh, you might have 50 cents spent uh, on every black child for, for a dollar spent on every white child. So you had educational opportunity, uh, but at the same time, uh, African-American children had tremendous limitations placed on their ability to learn. You go back uh, to the important decision, Brown versus the Board of Education in 1954, then you, that's where you really began to see people really focus for the first time on understanding the importance of um, the role that history was playing. This idea of separate but equal, and as we know and have come to know that separate can never be equal, uh, really has perpetuated many of the problems that we have currently in our system today. What we saw as a crisis 30 years ago, we've lived with us for so long, it's just become a condition. Um, and when you look at JCPS and, and look at the numbers, uh, where you see significant differences between schools, but within just about every one of those schools, there is a real, real drop off in terms of achievement by race. Uh, you plug in students from other racial groups, it's kind of up and down. Uh, Latino population and the Native American population will tend to parallel African Americans pretty well. Uh, the Asian American population, it kind of depends on which Asians. Uh, there's, there's one group that's kind of sailing along. Uh, there are more recent Asian immigrants, more from Southeast Asia, uh, who are having many, many of the, of, of the same problems. How much do we know about the history of Latinos in this country? is one thing. How much do we know about the history of Latinos in Louisville, in the Louisville metro area, in Kentucky? It's a completely different thing. Um, uh, I can speak, of course, as a recent immigrant, as a Latina who is a recent immigrant, but how about those Latinos who are not immigrants, not only not recent immigrants, but not immigrants at all? And if you uh, talk with anybody that has grown up here as a Latino, they will tell you their stories in terms of being these completely isolated, um, almost silenced minority, because nobody knew how to deal with them. 
uh, nobody understood how did they fit in the in the fabric of the culture and the society and the classroom and the schools. And I think that's what we are dealing with right now. One of the strange paradoxes we face now is we live in a society where by virtue of law, everybody's equal. And you would assume that outcomes and so forth would be equal as well. But again, we come back to those strange ideas running around in people's heads about race, uh, about class, about, about gender. Uh, and of course, the people whose heads those ideas run around in generally are the ones that control these educational systems. And so somehow, even in a nominally non-segregated society, uh, the, the same quality of education very, very seldom reaches children of color and poor children. We have to really understand that this diversity it's an asset. It's really the opportunity for someone to complement what I don't see, the abilities that I don't have, the skills that I haven't developed, and even, you know, to do the tasks that I don't enjoy doing. The achievement gap is a, kind of a new term for a very old phenomenon. Uh, the achievement gap exists by design, certainly historically. Uh, you know, separate but equal schools were designed to produce an achievement gap. Uh, supporting uh, a whole philosophy of education that was primarily vocational for African Americans and, and, and other people of color and primarily academic for the majority of white population uh, inescapably creates inequality. So the inequality in a, in a sense was, it was institutionalized, it was structural for a very, very long time. You know, now we're in a society where you've got the inertia of a system designed to produce one set of results on one hand, you've got the philosophy of a system that is not supposed to produce those kind of results anymore. Today, our Jefferson County Public Schools are more diverse than they have ever been. And because there's so many students from so many different backgrounds, this uh, thing that we call cultural competence on the part of the educators and people in the school buildings is really important. And I think that uh, having that historical perspective helps educators and helps those who come in contact with these students to be able to serve these students in a much better way. And an example of this uh, would be truly understanding and appreciating um, the challenges that different groups of students bring with them to the classroom in terms of how they got to uh, be in the current situations that they face with before they come through the doors of the school every day. We cannot assume that uh, when you ask one student you can generalize. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges that we have because our, our brains help us function in the world by categorizing. And I, this is something I teach constantly. It's a very useful skill. When I come to work in the morning, I know that this is not something to eat. This is a pain, I, and I used to write it. So, but it's not like I have to stop and think, oh, is this edible or not? It's my brain is categorizing, edible, not edible, safe, not safe. So how do we challenge that very useful mental, organizational ability that we have as humans not to apply that to human beings, especially when we are not familiar with them? You know, how do you work with these 30 very different little creatures every, every day, uh, or every hour in many cases? Uh, and teachers need tools for that. Um, they need to get it through schools themselves, through the professional development, uh, they all have to work on rank at universities, they need to get it there. Uh, they need to get it from, in a sense, apprenticing under teachers who've already mastered these kind of techniques. Uh, but you kind of triangulate, and, and if, if you're lucky, you get a really good teacher at the end of that. Uh, if you're not, you may get a teacher who's great with, with a few students and 
hopefully just no worse than ordinary with the rest. A teacher's responsibility or a teacher's job uh, in the school is to make sure that they're bringing the curriculum to the students in a way that's meaningful to the students. Uh, education research has proven through the years that it does make a difference in how you present information to students in terms of whether or not they're able to receive process and make sense of that information. And history has a large part to do with why there is a difference in terms of how we process information. Uh, just looking at um, males and females, for example, in terms of how they learn and, and their different modalities and, and receptiveness in, uh, in order to uh, learn information and learning styles. Um, looking at African American students uh, versus uh, European students of European descent, uh, uh, Asian students and the way that they approach uh, school and learning. All of these are very different uh, and the differences uh, are not because of the, the race or necessarily the gender, but because of the styles of learning uh, that these different groups bring with them to the classroom. You can take students who, based on test scores, look the same. You know, they're in the same tracking groups and all that kind of thing. And, and then put them in some schools and you'll still see a significant gap. Now these are kids that on paper are all the same because you group them based on that. But then you still see the same differences. Uh, you have other schools that have kind of a different way of working with students and operating with students. Uh, you can take kids that may look very different on paper, but you can bring them all up. Uh, an awful lot has to do with what educators do. We, we often want to say that the differences in achievement are related to differences